Let's take a look at an example of a sorted array list as we continue our study of classes with generics. Now, sorted data plays a very important part in computer science. And if you think about it, that's pretty logical. Think of an old fashioned phone book, you know, one that's paper. All the data in that phone book is in sorted order. Would you be able to find somebody's phone number in New York City if the phone book wasn't sorted? No, of course not. By putting things in sorted order, it makes it enormously easier to search for them. And this is true in computer science, too. In computer science, when things are sorted, we can use a very powerful search strategy called binary search. Here's how it works. You repeatedly probe the middle of the remaining elements. If the target value you're looking for is smaller than the middle element, you search only the lower half. If the target is equal to the middle element, then you found your result and you're done. If the target is bigger than the middle element, then you search only the upper half. This is an unbelievably powerful strategy. Let me show you an example. Let's talk about the efficiency here. Suppose we're searching a list that has a million elements in it. Now, a million elements sounds like a lot of elements, but in the context of today's computer science, this is not an especially large group of data. The first probe removes half a million elements from consideration. So you do one comparison, and you know that a half of the million elements aren't it. That's getting a good bang for your buck. Now, the second probe only removes a quarter of a million options, but still you're getting a lot of value here. The third one will remove 125,000. With just three probes, we've removed 875,000 choices out of a million. That is a tremendous increase in efficiency over stepping through an array one position at a time. That's called linear search, and with that, each probe would remove only one value. So we could do as many as a million probes. So this is really a fantastic strategy. But the thing is, binary search only works with sorted data. And so having the data sorted is really, really important. So the question then becomes, how do we sort data? Well, if the data is already in an array list, this is kind of a tricky problem. We're going to address it in the next quarter of the class once we have nested loops available for our use. But there's another strategy that we can do now, and that is to insert the data in such a way that it remains sorted while it's being inserted. And that's something that's within our grasp at this point. Now the method signature for this will be void, add, ArrayList string of list. So we're adding to an ArrayList of strings our target string. Let's talk a little bit about how the algorithm would work. Well, first off, we're going to need to use methods from the Java API because our list is an array list of strings. Now, the first thing we probably want to look for is to see if there is a method that does this. There are lots of methods in the API. So let's go and take a look and see if anything looks promising. Here's the array list class. I'm going to scroll down until I find the methods. And we see right up that we have some add methods. There are two of them, and then some add all methods. Those are not the right ones. So the first method adds an element at the end of the list. And the second one adds a specified element at a specified position in the list. Well, neither one of those is saying anything about sorting. Now, it's not a bad idea to actually click on these and take a look and make sure that you understand what it's doing. So let's read all the instructions. This inserts the specified element at the specified position in the list. It shifts the element currently at that position, if there is any, and any subsequent elements to the right by adding one to their indices. Huh, so that's sort of interesting. Notice that we're going to get an index out of bounds exception, which is Java's way of saying that this just isn't going to work if the index is less than zero or is greater than size. Now, something to pay attention to here is that it was not greater than or equal to size. The index being equal to size is actually OK. These are the kind of boundary conditions that you need to watch for very, very carefully when you're doing code. So for all of our work reading the API, the thing we know at this point is that the API doesn't have any way of keeping data in sorted order. So our looking for one that adds it in sorted order just didn't pan out. That happens sometimes. 
So what we have to do is work with the tools that are in the API. Now, that first add command, that one isn't going to help us out because that's just putting things at the end of the list. So unless our data happens to magically, automatically always be in sorted order, that isn't going to work either. So that second add method, the one with the index in it, that has to be the one we want to use. So what we're going to need to do is find the correct index for the data and then insert a new element at that index. Now, we need to make sure that the method shifts data aside. Well, guess what? It does. We just read the Java API to know that. So then the question becomes, how do we find the index? This is a little trickier. There is a method in the string class that's called compareTo, and we haven't used it before, so now it's time to really talk about what this means. It uses something called lexicographic ordering. Now, this is kind of the same as alphabetical order, but it's a little bit different, and the reason it's different is because uppercase and lowercase letters are different in ASCII, and they aren't in English. So let's go back and look at an ASCII table again and sort of refresh our memory on this. Here's an ASCII table, and notice over here are our capital letters, capital A through capital Z, and over here are our small letters, little a through little z. So the capital letters come first, they're at smaller decimal values, which is what this leftmost column is, than the small letters. So in other words, capital A and little a are two different things and capital A comes before little a. So that's how lexicographic ordering is different than alphabetical ordering. So the way lexicographic ordering works is strings are compared one character at a time until a non-matching character is found. Now it starts from the left, which makes sense. That's similar to alphabetical ordering. If all of the characters match, then the length is compared. Let's take a look on how all the details work here. So let's say we have a string first, which has Abby in it, and then a string second that has Abigail. Now we know in alphabetic ordering that Abby would be before Abigail. Let's see if that's true in lexicographic ordering. So we're going to do first dot compare to second. Well, what's going to happen is the capital A in Abby will be compared to the capital A in Abigail. Those letters are the same. So then they compare it in index 1. The B in Abby will be compared to the B in Abigail. Those letters are the same, and so we still are having a 0 here. Then we compare the second B in Abby to the I in Abigail. If you take the number that the letter B represents and you subtract the number that the letter I represents, this will be a negative number. And because it's negative, that means Abby comes before Abigail. So this is how lexicographic ordering works. Let's look at another example. Now I'm using a little bit of different syntax here and one you may not have seen before. It's actually legal to use double quote, ABC double quote, where you would have a string identifier and use the compare to method. This can be kind of handy to know it sometimes. So let's see what happens when we compare ABC to ABCDE. Well, the little a is compared to the little a first, they match. The little b is compared to the little b, they match. The c is compared to the c, they match. When all the characters match like that and one of the strings is ended, what Java does is it uses the difference in length to determine the result. So it takes the length of ABC, which is 3, and subtracts the length of ABCDE, which is 5, which gives us a negative value. Remember that a negative value means that ABC will come before ABCDE. So we know now that the shorter string object comes first. Now when strings have all of the same characters and are the same length, then 0 is returned. So compare to contains a negative number when the first string is less than the second one when it comes before. Zero when it's the same, positive when the first string is greater than the second one. Now if all that is confusing, remember that it's documented in the API. It's a little bit hard to read, but you can do it. Let's take a look at what this method would look like. First we'll have public static void add, arrayList string list, and string target. So that's the signature we talked about earlier. 
Now what we need to do is we need to step through the list one element at a time and see if we found the right place to insert it. So we start with an index at zero and we make sure that our index doesn't go greater than the size of the list, which is list.size. Now inside that loop, we compare list.getOfIndex, so that's the string at that index, to the target. If it's less than zero, what that means is the value at that index comes before the target. Well, in that case, you want to keep moving on, so we increment the index. Now, the first time that you find a value that's bigger than the target, well, guess what? That means you found the place where you want to do your insertion. So to do the insertion, you use list.add index comma target. So that's the add method that we looked at in the Java API. And then we return. Now what the return does is it takes us out of this method. So at that point, we know we're finished. Now, if we get all the way through that while loop and we have not found a place where our target value is smaller than one of the values in it, that means we need to add it on to the end. And so that's what's happening way down at the bottom. We have list.add of index and target. Now, if you think of what value index will have at that point, the index less than list.size, that test, has just failed. So that means the index is going to be equal to list.size. Remember when we were looking at the API? We determined that that was actually a legal condition. That's how you add things on to the end of the list. And so that's how you keep a list in sorted order. So keep programming.